With the first season of The House of the Dragon entering its fifth episode, all the plots, betrayals, and political maneuverings have already begun to take place. This reminds us of how Game of Thrones kicked off. However, the second installment has done well to not toe the exact same lines. If you'd like to know just how political and horny it's getting, then watch this video to the very end. How's House of the Dragon getting political? If you recall, the Game of Thrones was won and lost mainly by violence. Kings were slain, wars were waged, and the dragons torched their riders' enemies. However, the House of the Dragon seems to be taking another route in the race for political power. The second installment, while still expected to have its fair share of violence, seems to be using marriages as the major weapon in the wars. It's true that there were some notable marriages in Game of Thrones, but none of them were particularly for the purpose of gaining power. Sansa's marriages to Joffrey and Bolton have already proven that. The same cannot be said for the House of the Dragon, where marriages are proving to be the key to political ascension. The show highlights how women are nothing but mere pawns of the powerful men at the top, and it will be interesting to see if this trend will continue for the rest of the season, or if they'll resort to more brute force later on. It's too early to say, as we're just entering the fifth episode, but from what we've seen so far, it seems women are going to be the key to achieving any sort of political ambition in the House of the Dragon. How political was episode four? First of all, I still don't get why episode 4 was titled King of the Narrow Sea, being that it was focused mainly on two women, Rhaenyra and Alicent. The episode starts with Rhaenyra at Dragonstone, being bored to death by a long line of suitors who are looking to sit next to her on the Iron Throne when she becomes queen. Sadly for them, she left before they could even go halfway, and on her way back, her ship got nudged by her returning Uncle Daemon's dragon. Speaking of Daemon, the king's exiled younger brother came back victorious against the crab feeders and he brought along their leader's wooden crown and hammer, being his spoils of war. After presenting them to his brother and king, who was the one responsible for exiling him in the first place, he bent the knee to show his loyalty. It was a card well played by Damon, as he knew full well that the king was the forgiving type, and that his show of loyalty would put him back on his good side, even though he did not come back with good intentions. Now, with Damon back on his brother's good side, and with Rhaenyra openly expressing her frustrations at the thought of being an air-producing factory, the stage for the political and sexual maneuvering was being set. Did Damon discover Rhaenyra's vulnerability? In true royal fashion, King Viserys throws a party to celebrate his exiled brother's return and victory over the crab feeders. And it was there that Rhaenyra complained to Alicent, her friend and father's wife, that it was unfair that she's being forced to choose a suitor to squeeze out heirs. Unfortunately, that was the same situation Alicent had found herself in, as she didn't love the king, but was pushed by her father, the king's hand, to marry him so that he he too can have his blood on the Iron Throne. And as fate would have it, Alicent had given birth to a baby boy named Aegon, who, under normal circumstances, would have been heir. However, King Viserys, out of desperation, had already named his eldest daughter Rhaenyra as the heir, long before Aegon was born. Anyway, Rhaenyra goes to see her uncle Daemon, and she equally complains to him about forced marriages and her desire not to have children. She also mentions how her mother was forced to squeeze out heirs until it killed her. Damon, being the sly fox that he is, takes Rhaenyra's words with a pinch of salt, and their escapades begin once she found out that her room has a secret door that led outside the castle. Damon knows about the secret door too, and being fully aware of Rhaenyra's frustrations, he decides to take her out of the castle and give her a feel of the other side of King's Landing. And that's when things start to get heated up. What happened between Rhaenyra and Damon in King's Landing? Disguised in hoodies, both Damon and Rhaenyra hit the streets of King's Landing in the middle of the night. Of course, this isn't new to Damon but it was the first experience for Princess Rhaenyra. After seeing a stage play in which the crowd booed the idea of having a female ruler, she further confirmed what she already knew that no one wanted her sitting on the Iron Throne. The actors in the play comically pitted the three potential heirs against each other. Rhaenyra, who's already been named heir, her younger brother, who had just been born, and her uncle, who also has an eye on the throne. When the play was over, Damon took his niece Rhaenyra to a brothel, a place she had never been before, and surely a place not fit for a princess. There, everyone was having and it was only a matter of minutes before uncle and niece were all over themselves. They kissed intensely and savagely, and just as Rhaenyra was about to take it to the next level, Damon turned away and left the brothel. It's been made clear that incest was not a taboo among the Targaryens, so why exactly did Damon take off? What happened between Sir Christian and Rhaenyra? With Damon leaving Rhaenyra all alone at the brothel, she had no choice but to return home. However, going back to the keep didn't mean she was done having fun for the night. What she couldn't get from her uncle Damon, she decided to get 
from Sir Christian Cole, who she lured into her bedroom and seduced. Poor Sir Christian didn't want to do it, as his job was to guard the princess, not sleep with her. But since he too had feelings for Rhaenyra, it was only a matter of time before he gave in to her womanly needs. The love scene between Rhaenyra and Sir Christian wasn't as aggressive as it was with Damon at the brothel, but it was still smoking hot in every sense. After considering the fact that her friend Alicent had been having emotionless, dead-eyed with her constantly drunk and old father, I'd say Renera hit the jackpot that night. Is Renera's secret exposed? While entering and leaving the brothel that night, the King's Hand, Otto Hightower, had sent a spy to keep an eye on Renera and Damon. News of their escapades was delivered to Hightower, who had the unfortunate task of informing the King. I say unfortunate, because it would be awkward telling the King that his daughter was caught having f with her uncle in a brothel. And even though Renera and Damon didn't actually have the news would surely be hard for the king to swallow. But I'm sure Hightower didn't care, as this situation plays out perfectly for him. The scandal might force the king to unname Rhaenyra as the heir to the throne, which will mean that Hightower's grandson, Aegon, will now be named heir. Alison overheard Hightower breaking the news to the king, and she immediately went to confront Rhaenyra about it. Of course, Rhaenyra denied the allegations and assured Alicent she was still a virgin. Although that too was not true, as she had slept with Sir Christian the night before. Will the truth ever be revealed? I guess we'll have to wait to see what the subsequent episodes hold. What happens to Damon and Hightower? A hungover Damon returned to a hostile welcome from the king's guards. They grabbed him by the hands and threw him at the feet of the king, who confronted him about sleeping with his daughter. Damon, being the troublemaker that he is, claimed it was true, yet Viserys couldn't bring himself to kill him. In fact, Damon proceeded to ask for Rhaenyra's hand in marriage, which the king blatantly refused. Instead, he banned Damon from King's Landing for good, but we all know this isn't the last we'll see of him. As for Hightower, Hour. The king relieved him of his duties as hand out of suspicion that he wanted to disgrace his daughter only because of his own political ambitions. And as for Rhaenyra, the king has ordered her to marry Laenor, son of his cousin Rhaenys and her husband Corlys Valerian. For the record, Laenor and Rhaenyra are second cousins. However, Rhaenyra agreed to her father's wishes, and a union between her and Laenor would mean that both houses have been merged, and with the Valerian fleets added to the Targaryen dragons, they will surely be an unstoppable force. So guys, what do you think will happen now that Rhaenyra has agreed to marry Laenor? Will Damon sit back and let it play out, or will he cause more problems for his family? Talk to us in the comments section, and while you're at it, please like and share this video. Also, hit the subscribe and notification buttons to stay updated with more interesting videos like this.